I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 24. And in this module, we're going to look at compound interest and present value calculations. You may have seen these concepts in other classes, a business math class, earlier in the financial accounting course, or perhaps in a finance class. It starts with a basic awareness that a dollar to be received today is worth more than a dollar to be received in the future. The reason being that dollar can be reinvested and earn returns. Very simply, if alpha, an investment, returns 100 a year for five years, and beta returns $50 a year for 10 years, which is preferable? Well, alpha is preferable because you get the money back sooner, and you're able to reinvest it and earn additional returns elsewhere. Now, we can actually start to quantify the value of these cash flows. First, though, we need to think about compound interest. Compound interest allows for interest to be earned on previously accrued interest. Annual interest becomes larger each year. This is also referred to as future value concepts. And so, for example, if one invests $1 at 10% for one year, you can see that it would grow to a dollar and a dime after one year, a dollar and 10 cents. If that dollar and 10 cents is reinvested for the next successive year, it would earn 11 cents of interest and grow to a dollar 21. And so it would go in time, as shown by this graphic. A dollar would grow to a dollar 10, a dollar 10 would grow to a dollar 21, a dollar 21 would grow to a dollar 33.1, and so it would go. And there's a way to quantify or capture this mathematics by formula. It's important to recognize 1 plus i to the n, where i is the interest rate per period and n is the number of periods. And so we can apply this and say if $1 is invested for 25 years, how much will it grow to at the end of 25 years? And the answer is $10.83. And the way we can calculate that is 1.1 to the 25th power would give us a factor of 10.83. Now, there are tables that have calculated these values for us. They're called future value tables. We'll see in a moment some present value tables, but they're useful, for example, in a calculation such as the following. If 5000 is invested for 10 periods at 5%, it'll grow to $8,144.45. That's calculated as 5000 times 1.62889, which is found in the table, the future value of a lump sum table, in the 5% column 10 period row. And so these tables are included on the website and in the appendix to your managerial accounting textbook. In looking at the tables, it's important to note that the interest rate is the interest rate per period. A period can be a year, a quarter, or a month. To show by example, if we have a 12% annual interest rate, but we're compounding interest every month rather than every year, then we're no longer dealing with a 12% interest rate per period, and we're no longer dealing with, if it's a two-year period, two periods. We're instead dealing with 1% per period for a total of 24 periods. So we would want to look at the 1% 24% period cell in the table. Turning our attention to annuities, annuities are level streams of payments. Each payment is the same, and it occurs on a regular interval. For example, some retirement accounts or investment accounts, leases, insurance settlements, tax-related calculations are often based on the concept of annuities. An annuity due, also known as an annuity in advance, is one where the payments are made at the beginning of each period. For example, if one invests $5,000 at the beginning of each year for the next five years at 10%, how much will they have? We're looking for how much that future value will grow to, and this graphic shows very clearly how that happens. The first $5,000 is invested for a full five years, so we multiply it times 1.1 to the fifth. The next $5,000 payment at the beginning of year two is only in the pool or in the investment pool for four years, so we're going to compound it times 1.1 to the fourth. And so it would go totaling up the value of each of the individual $5,000 payments gives us the $33,578 as the future value of that annuity. As you suspect, there's a table that'll show that. The future value of an annuity due table would show in the 10% column five period row a factor of 6.71561 that we could multiply times the $5,000 amount to find the future value of that annuity due. An ordinary annuity is just the opposite. The payments are at the end of each period. And so here I'm just moving the $5,000 payments from the beginning to the end of each year, repeating the sequence of calculations except noting that the first payment's only invested for four years, the next one for three years, and so it would go. The last payment of $5,000 is only worth $5,000 since it occurs on the very last day. It has no opportunity to grow with interest, in other words. Present value is just the opposite of future value. It's also known as discounting. It determines the current worth of cash to be received in the future. And it's really reciprocal mathematics. For example, how much would one take today in lieu of $1 to be received in one year if the interest rate is 10%? And the answer is 0.909090, or 90.9 .9 cents. 
and the mathematics is the reciprocal, the factor, the point 90990 would be 1 over 1.1 to the first power, for example. We can extend this, a $25,000 lump sum to be received at the end of 10 years. If 8% is the annual interest rate and we're compounding semi-annually, it would have a present value of 11,410. We would find that by multiplying the 25,000 times 1 over 1.04 to the 20th. The 1.04 reflects the 4% semi-annual interest rate, 8% annual, 4% semi-annual, and the 20 periods reflects 10 years. There's 20 semi-annual periods in a 10-year window. Here's showing how we can calculate those amounts for an annuity. A stream of payments of $5,000 to be received at the beginning of the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and fifth year. Discounting back by the formulations would give us the present value of the annuity due in this case. Or if we go to the next slide, the present value of an ordinary annuity. I've moved the payments to the end of the period and it's got a slightly lower present value of $18,954. Electronic spreadsheets usually include functions for calculating present values. Here I'm replicating one of the uh, pop-up windows that you might have for a particular cell where we're entering the 10% interest rate per period, five periods, the payment amount $5,000. So we've got five $5,000 payments and it returns a result of $18,954 to the cell to which that is attached. So that's a very nice tool for both present and future values that is in most electronic spreadsheet software. Let's look at a fairly complex example to close this video. So we've got Markham Real Estate is considering buying an office building. The building will be vacant for two years while it's renovated and then it will produce rents of $100,000 at the beginning of year three, $100,000 at the beginning of year four, and $100,000 at the beginning of year five. And then we're going to sell the building at the end of the fifth year for $700,000. And Markham desires to know the present value of the cash flows assuming a 5% interest rate. Well here's a graphic that shows how we could do that. It looks fairly complex but when you break down into individual components it's somewhat simplified. Here's our cash inflow across the top of the screen. At the beginning of year three, we get $100,000. At the beginning of year four, and at the beginning of year five. And then we get our $700,000 sales price at the end of year five. First of all, this involves an annuity and a lump sum. The present value of the annuity of $100,000 is 285941 as of the beginning of year three. But I need to discount that back for two additional years to find the present value of that stream of payment as of the beginning of year one. So the present value of the rents as of the beginning of year one is $259,357. The $700,000 terminal payment has a present value of $548,471. And we total the two components to find that the present value of the cash inflows is $807,828, assuming a 5% interest rate. We'll revisit this example in the next module and show how we can enhance our decision making process through this type of analysis.